Hey, Toy Addicts, it's Jody. Let's talk about what sold in August on eBay from my eBay store. If you just recently watched my July video, thank you very much. If you didn't watch it, go check that out. Yes, I didn't get a chance to record that earlier, so you're getting them both pretty close together. <laughs> so in August, I had some pretty good sales. It wasn't as good as July, but I had some pretty good sales. Um, I... I'm going to say that if I bought something that's Avon, I probably paid 50 cents for it. If I bought something that's paper, paper dolls, greeting cards, stickers, I bought a huge lot of that that was still a bag for $10. So I'm saying 10 cents. I probably don't even have 10 cents in them, but I'm saying about 10 cents per item for most of those things. Um, these little kittle dolls, I paid $2 each for them. So those are a great bolo if you ever find them. They're, they're tiny. They're about two to three inches tall. The first thing I sold in August was one of those little kittle dolls. This is Lenore Limousine doll. And one of the things about these uh, that I want to mention, if you, in the description, I have a link to my blog, toy-addict.com. And if you go there, there's a little bar on top that has some different tabs, and one of the tabs is toy identification, and there are some great sites there for toy identification. You, now, you can use Google Lens and Google Lens for a lot of toys with you there to figure out what it is, or just kind of type a description in eBay, and sometimes you can figure out what it is from there. But the older and more vintage a toy is, makes it harder to figure out through eBay or through Google Lens. So there's some really good identification pages there. So if you're needing help with identifying things, check that out. I have girls toys, I have boys toys, I have a bunch of different links there and I'm always adding more links as well. And if you have an, a favorite identification site, please put it in the comments down below and um, I can add that to the page. So the second item here is a Halston um, co men's cologne, the old version, which I think maybe they changed the scent. In previous videos, I have talked about selling colognes and perfumes. You can still sell old colognes and perfumes on eBay. They have a specific category for vintage and collectible. I always put on my listings, this item is collectible. It is not for use. Um, and you have to include that in there for eBay to be okay with you to sell it. But they do have a category for it, so they do allow you to sell it. This is a magazine, Wow magazine, again from that fill -a bag sales. It wasn't complete, it's been cut and stuff, but I figured I'd throw it up as a listing for $7.50, and I actually sold it to someone for $7.25. They sent me a $0.25 cent off offer. <laughs> This next item here is, again, from that sale, so about $0.10, cents, Poochie Paper Doll Activity Book, sold for $30, and she sold really quick. Poochie is a cartoon from the 80s. It was very short-lived. The items were adorable. I was obsessed. With the first sticker sheet in this video, if you watch my last video, I have done really well with sticker sheets. This is a Sandy Lion Maxi Activity sticker sheet of the Three Wise Men that sold for $20. And then we have some dress up like paper doll type stickers in greeting cards. Those sold for $10 each, both to the same person. This is a postcard that sold for $9. Oh, this Fisher Price Little People set. This is a JCPenney exclusive set. I found that information out from thisoldtoy.com, which is one of the identification sites that I have listed over there on my blog. And it is awesome. It has every Fisher Price item from probably the 50s till about 2000. They, the website's still up, but they, I think they really stopped contributing to it about, there's a lot of great information on there. This is a menu, Andy Wong's Chinese Sky Room. This sold for $30. I bought a whole bunch of menus for $2 each a while back. I did a video talking about menus and what to look for in menus and what seem to be the best sellers and stuff. So if you're interested, if you sell ephemera at all, menus are usually a pretty easy pickup. They're usually pretty cheap, a dollar or two. 
and um, some of them making pretty good money. This is a Barbie journal. I like to pick up Barbie ephemera. Sometimes it takes a long time to sell, and I paid a dollar for this, and it sold for $7. Not huge money, but it's something I enjoy. This is a little kittle item, a little cologne bottle that a doll went inside, and I didn't have uh, the doll that went with this one, so I sold that for $9. This is a Bugs Bunny salt and pepper shaker. Only had Bugs, didn't have the other side, so I've had him for quite a while, but he sold for $10. Vintage lipstick, rosewood color this is probably 80s or 90s and um, i bought a bunch of lipsticks 50 cents each again i listed them as um for collectible use for collectible purposes and not for use and uh, this one sold for 20 dollars barbie outfit this sold for 25 behringer doll is um i don't usually pick those up but this one i was at a sale and I looked up the comp and I was like, hmm, $60, $65, $70. I could do that. And I picked her up in the box, but what I didn't realize at the time is the box is in terrible condition. So I ended up taking a little bit less because I took her out of the box. I decided I'm not going to bother finding a box to fit this giant box when the giant box is trashed, basically. So I took an offer of her for $60 and I paid $10 for her. So you know, that's for some people paying $10 for a baby doll is really paying up, but I sold her for 60. This little glow worm here. These were Wendy's toys. They came with little sleeping bags. They also, I believe, sold them on card like at Toys R Us or whatever, but um, they did have a series of them at Wendy's. And um, that sold for $10. Some of these sell for pretty decent money if you find the right ones. Um, up in the $20 to $30 range. Here's a perfume I bought from that uh, health and beauty haul that I got. I did a video on that a while back. Most of the perfumes I paid $1, $2, $3 for. Um, I believe I paid a dollar for this one and sold for $18 is a set of goodie stay tight barrettes these are from 1975 people love their goodie those sold for $25 and these are just some rubber snakes and lizards I had a bunch of this stuff in my teacher staff that I was like giving away for prizes and stuff and um, I made some little lots on eBay and I was surprised at how much they sold for because typically you pick these up a handful of them at a garage sale for like a quarter or something this is a Clinique hairbrush, um, or not brush, but comb and a mirror. And that sold for, I believe, $15. I love selling vintage combs and brushes. This is just a little Hallmark Mary Miniatures Santa Claus chipmunk. These are fun little figures when you find them. They don't sell for much, and a lot of them take a long time to sell. Um, but I only paid a quarter for it, so... It was cute sitting on my shelf until I sold. Here's another vintage lipstick that sold for 20 Some vintage oil of Olay. Again, always mention on these vintage health and beauty products, they are for collecting and not for use. People should not be using oil of Olay from the 40s. Even though some of them might want to, they should not be. <laughs> I got some of these um, plastic bell charms in a big tub. And... Um, I put a lot together and these sold for $12. That same tub had a bunch of doll combs and brushes. So these are all combs and brushes from Sweetie Pups. And that lot sold for $10. Some more Stay Tight Barrettes. I don't know if I mentioned the last time that I paid $2 for these packages of barrettes. I bought six or eight packages of them and sold them for $25 each. Another little $2 little fiddle. She sold for $28. These cups I had picked up for a friend a while back and she didn't end up needing them. And so they just sat in my closet for like years. And finally, the other day, I was pulling some things out of my closet and I was like, hey, I should list those. <laughs> and they sold pretty quick for $33. Corn King um, is by Shawnee Pottery and uh, it's pretty um, well known. They don't go for as much as they used to, but it's pretty cute. Just 
cool. Everything just looks like ears of corn. This was just a little pencil eraser of Betty Rebel from the Flintstones, and she sold for $9. A Raggedy Ann paper doll book for $15. This was a Tournament of Roses Rose Parade program that I picked up at an estate sale. The art I thought was really cool on these. This sold for $13.50. Here is a shoe for a Chrissy doll. This sold for $13.50 also, and um, it's just the, just the right shoe. So the, these doll, most doll shoes aren't labeled left and right, but Chrissy doll shoes are. And so this was the right shoe. And these shoes, uh, they sell pretty well. I've probably in the past three or four wet sold videos, you've seen me sell pairs of these shoes. I've made hundreds of dollars off these shoes recently. This is an old school book along the way. I have a collection of these books, and so I usually pick them up. And some of them fit into my collection, some of them don't. Some of them I end up with duplicates, but I typically don't pick them up a whole lot just for resale because the resale prices aren't very high on them. Here's another health and beauty item that sold for $10. It's just a tiny little hairspray bottle. It's really short, so I believe it was a travel size, but it didn't say that anywhere on it. So I just um, listed it, listed the size that it was a four inch can. This is a Rainbow Bright Easter greeting card. Greeting cards with characters on them from the 70s, from the 80s, from the 90s. People love them. It's just an offshoot of if someone collects Rainbow Bright, they're going to collect Rainbow Bright greeting cards too. If someone collects greeting cards, typically they like to um, specify, you know, I collect the characters or I collect ones with unicorns on them or I collect for doll greeting cards or whatever. So it's greeting cards can be a cross collectible if they have, you know, characters and stuff on them. And those paper doll ones do well too. This was just a cute little kitty cat ceramic figurine that I got at a sale for a quarter and it sat on my shelf for a long time, <laughs> but sold for $10. Bank of the Everlades postcard. I love selling postcards. They don't sell for much, but you also don't pay for much. They're easy to ship, easy to store, easy to list. So why not? This was a, it's just like a little tin for like first aid tape. Totally not something I would typically buy. I, it just came in a lot of stuff and I had it. So I figured I'd list it and it sold. This is a Prince Charles and Lady Diana Spencer rag doll kit. Interesting, very interesting set. Didn't didn't sell because of the queen's passing because this was before that happened. So just people like stuff of the royals. And here is another postcard. This one I thought was really interesting. The Savo Bridge in Kenya in Africa is, um, they made a movie about it called Ghosts in the Darkness where all these lions were attacking the people building the bridge. I don't know. It's a very interesting story. The problem that I have when I'm listing ephemera is I want to find out the history of it, especially the postcards. And then I go down this rabbit hole and spend a bunch. Of so it's not always good, but it's fun. There's a little Dolly Darlings doll. They're a little bit bigger than little Kittles. They have these kind of sideways cast eyes. They're pretty interesting. This one was called Boy Trap, so it's worth a little bit more than some of the other ones. They're pretty cute little dolls, and I find them quite often mixed in with little kittles because they're about that same size. This is just a Christmas fabric panel, sold for $15. I have a Barbie Jewel Secret Secrets Mail Away. This is, it's like a little locket that you could uh, send in some points for and get one of these for with your Barbie doll, your Jewel Secrets Barbie doll. And uh, I want to give a shout out to a viewer who bought this and she actually made a video opening it on her um, Instagram. So I will, if I remember to, I will um, connect that down below. She made a real cute video. And then these are just some bingo cards. Oh, this was a fun one. So this little guy, this is a Holt Howard Christmas 1959 elf pixie rectangle planter. 
So Holt Howard items can be very collectible, and he is rare. Um, there wasn't any others of the same one listed, and none had even sold in the last 90 days. Now I do have Worth Point, so I was able to find one on Worth Point that sold about five years ago, I believe, and it sold for $91. So, and then there were some other ones even further back that had sold for less. 65, 40, etc. But this I knew was a rare item because there's not any others listed. I knew that this um, kind of kitsch is very hot right now. These little kitsch planters, things with little elves on them, stuff like that is very hot right now. So, you know, I decided, you know what? I'm going to list it for 150 see what happens. If nobody's interested in it, then I'll bring the price down and hopefully it will sell by Christmas. Well, two hours after I listed it, it was sold for $150. So uh, don't be afraid of, um, I, I say, I've say i said this a few times now, don't be afraid of the comps. If the comps seem low to you, then list your item for higher. Even if there's other ones that are listed, we have this thing in our brains that tells us that if something is more expensive, it's better right? Now, a lot of us resellers have figured out how to overcome that and we want to buy the cheapest thing, but not everyone has figured that out yet. And sometimes people see a higher price, even if it's not necessarily better condition or there's nothing more special about it than the lower price one, they see that higher price and they want to buy it. And I know a lot of us think we need to, you know, race to the bottom and sell it cheaper because then someone will buy it cheaper. And that's true for some things, but especially when you have more unusual things, more collectible things, just try having a higher price and see what happens. I'm not afraid of the comps. I'm not, you know, that said $91. And to me, I thought, no, I think this is going to go for more. And it sure did. <laughs> So moving on to Hello Kitty Busy Book. I couldn't find this at all. It's from 1982. I know how early Hello Kitty stuff can do pretty well. So I listed at 30 and that sold real quick too. And then we have a George Imports baby toddler little girl. She's holding like a little blanket, which I was terrified that this was going to break off in shipping so it got wrapped so well that sold for $23.50 this next set here okay so this was an odd one I you guys probably know that I've gotten a ton a ton a ton of stickers lately right and I've been kind of going through some of these sticker books and making videos of them and this one book the paper was definitely not acid free so it kind of reacted with a lot of the stickers and as I was going through the book a lot of the stickers just fell out now they're not sticky anymore but they just fell off the paper basically so um, I had these Don Russ um, odd rods stickers they're kind of like um, uh, Ed Roth kind of like rat think style. Um, and I actually do believe they had like a lawsuit later about it, but so that I had all these stickers, they weren't stuck anymore. They don't have their cards or anything, but I thought someone might want these. So I went ahead and laid them all out and listed them for 20 and got an offer for 18 and still sold stickers with no stickiness and no backs on the trading cards or anything for $18. So I was happy with that. Hopefully the buyer was happy too. Here is another Sandy Lion sticker sheet. Now this one is from the 90s, so those aren't as collectible. And that only sold for $9. Some dolls that were in some of those toy bins that I got. These were our Knickerbocker Dolly Pops. And I sold a set of three of them for $9. And then this little outfit is another Chrissy. Remember I was telling you about the right shoe earlier. Her little swimming suit sold for $20. Um, it was missing a snap on it. So I probably could have gotten $25 if it was just a little bit better. This is a really cute Barbie that I picked up for $5. It's an ice cream special edition. 
So she just had a really cute outfit on and stuff, and she ended up selling for 22 Over here we have a Hello Kitty double or full-size flat sheet. I always like putting fabric craft DIY in with sheets because a lot of people buy sheets, character sheets or not character sheets, just fun prints, vintage sheets to make things. They make clothes, they make purses, etc. This is a Donald Duck Goes to Disneyland book. Super cute. Sold for $7. This is a wind-up Mark's tin toy train engine. New York Central Lines. And um, I don't know. I had seen some higher comps for this. And I actually initially had it listed for $90. But I came down and came down and came down. I've had it since that, that the car was full haul in November. And so I ended up selling it for, I think it took $55, but it was a big estate sale haul that I bought tons of stuff for that I've like seven times to my money on the sale. So I was happy with taking that. This is a 1970 Upsy Downsy Mattel coloring book. It was a promotional book that you could get like at Toys R Us. You can see up here where it says free take one. So they were trying to um, entice you into buying these upsy downsy dolls. And that sold for $20. Here's another menu. This is a Fred Harvey. Har Fred Harvey had a lot of restaurants all across America. And this one is from 1951 and sold for $35. This was a little Gerber baby doll from 1997 that sold for $10. This was in a fill a bag of dolls. The fill a bag for the doll stuff was $30, but I got a lot of stuff in that bag. So I'm figuring I paid about 50 cents each for those things. Here's a Berenstain Bears paper doll book that sold for 10. This is a little girl's or a little kid's Sears bunny rabbit Easter outfit. So there's like a little bunny on the front and then there's like a little bunny tail on the back is really cute so it's for 15 bucks. this is a good one here more sandy lion stickers apparently in the first year they made they also made greeting cards which are extremely rare and other than one or two of the cards that i've been able to find pictures of on the internet there's like nothing about them <laughs> So this one sold for $150. And this this uh, sticker sheet in its on its own is pretty rare and would probably sell for, you know, 115 or so dollars for that sticker sheet. But because it was also on the greeting card, it did pretty well. This was a little promotional item from the Indian in the cupboard that was in that same bag. Um, a $30 thing, so 50 cents. These are little miniature 1.5 inch little uh, paper dolls. They're pretty neat. They're reproductions from the 90s of like Victorian paper dolls, but um, they're pretty cute. That these The set of five of them sold for $15. Here's another Chrissy outfit that sold for $20. Another Poochie paper doll book, that one sold for $35. Some hair combs, three airlines, hair combs, Korean, United, and Delta Airlines for $9. This little doll is kind of interesting. It's a Simplicity or Butterick. They both came out with them, and it's not marked. But they're like little mannequins for making your own doll clothes at home. And they're about Barbie size. They're a little bit bigger than Barbie, but um, it would be perfect for making Barbie clothes. And then over here, I've got Dixie's Diner Refrigerator. Just has one little refrigerator sold for $70. I did a video of the Dixie's Diner items that I picked up, and uh, they're pretty neat. I think they're pretty cute. It was very tempting to keep them all. <laughs> All these next five listings are postcards. They're tiny little paper doll postcards from um, a company that's just IF. It's a Danish company, and the same person bought all of them and wanted me to make sure that 
I let them know if they, um, if I happen to find any more of these, which I might, cause I bought so many bags of stuff and I'm just, I keep going through stuff and going through stuff and finding more and more that I didn't even know that I had. <laughs> these are two Avon items. Avon sells. I do still buy it and I do still sell it. It's not usually big sellers, but it does sell and these sold pretty quick. $15 and $10 for antiperspirants. And we have some Looney Tunes stickers for $7.50. Another glow worm for $12. An Old Spice gift set um, that sold for $55. I bought this set for $0.50 cents at that Avon sale. Another Sandy Lion sticker sheet that sold for $40. A Barbie book and record set that I bought forever ago for a dollar that sold for $12. This is a Cabbage Patch doll. And, um, she, I paid $10 for her at a sale. She had her full outfit and adoption papers. She sold for $50. I wrote on here, um, that she has T-strap shoes. That's the type of shoes that she has. People like those shoes. I wrote that she's double ponytail because that's her hairstyle. I am soon I'm going to make a video about selling Cabbage Patch and all the different nuances. There's a lot of nuances to the 80s dolls um, about what's popular and what people are looking for and stuff like that. This was a super fun, it's sort of like a pennant type, you know, how um, pennants are made from that real dense kind of... Um, felt fabric. It's that same kind of fabric, but it's for Flintstones Bedrock City. I had to pick this up because I went there just probably just a year before they closed and uh, in 2012, I think, or 13. Um, so I thought it was pretty neat. Here's another Dixie Diner, just one of the dolls. She sold for 25 some paper dolls that were already cut. These were Edward Gorey, and that sold for $15. An old VHS that I had bought for myself that I actually had two copies of. Um, I love old horror movies, and so um, I pick these up kind of whenever I see them for cheap usually. And this one I actually had listed. You can see it's on blue, which means this is probably the oldest thing I had listed uh, here on eBay. <laughs> And it sold for $6 in only like seven years. <laughs> so, um, old monster horror movie, like they say, um, uh, horror movies sell good on VHS, but not like the fifties monster movies. Those don't sell that well, but, um, more like the eighties horror that, that sells. Well in the 70s. So this was a fun set. These are, um, 1993 Russ cosmic critters. And this is the whole set. They were like, you would probably find these in like an American greeting store or something. I don't think they had um, a cartoon or anything like that. It was just a line of toys. And they're not even like toys because they're not, they're not made of plastic. They're more of kind of a hollow resin. So I don't think you could really play with these very much. I think they would fall apart. They would break pretty easily, I think. They're sort of a troll kind of thing. I don't know. Anyway, I paid, I believe I paid $6 each for these. And I sold the whole lot. I did not sell it for $180. I don't know why it doesn't show that I took an offer. But I sold it for $150 for the lot. I just thought they were interesting. So I picked them up at the sale that I was at. And um, I figured I'd go for it did good. <laughs> this is an Avon Raining Violets Cream Sachet. Paid 50 cents, sold for $9. Again, with the HBA uh, Health and Beauty stuff, um, this set sold for $20. And I think I paid $3 for it. Some more of those Danish postcards for $10. Some Menin Skin Bracer. This was like a large bottle. And um, that sold for $20. 
Oneida Care Bears two-piece fork and knife set for $27. This was a lounge fly backpack. Um, if you find these at garage sales that say that have the lounge fly, like the metal lounge fly um, tab, these are pretty popular right now. I don't know if they're going to, how long they're going to remain popular, but they're pretty popular right now. And they cost about $100 new. This one was, I had bought it from the Disney store. I actually bought it for myself. It was a return at the Disney store, so it was like $30. And I bought it for myself, but then I tried to wear it, and it's just not really my style and kind of a little clunky for me. So um, I decided to sell it, so it sold for $90. It took a while because it's not one of the, you know, super popular designs, this is a book I got for free at a garage sale and sold for $15. This is a little um, Count Von Count. Sesame Street had um, a really popular set of beanies in the 90s. And um, so Kellogg's came out with mini versions that were in the cereal box. And you can find those. I still find those every once in a while. I don't buy them very often. And this one just came in a lot, and that's why I have it. But it was um, this was the eight dollars. And this is again from the health and beauty stuff that I bought. A lot of the stuff I just kind of I had no idea for most of the stuff how much it was really going to sell for. I didn't have sell service, so I was just filling my bag, filling it, filling it, filling it. So this set, actually, I paid about $2, and it was actually empty, and I didn't realize it at the time, but it was empty because it's kind of a heavy metal can, um, but sold for $12, so I'm happy with that. This was one little sticker mod from a strip. So this is the type of sticker that um, you would buy at, like, Hallmark, or they had all kinds of stores where you could buy, like, stickers off the roll. You'd pull the sticker off the roll and each one was like 35 cents or whatever. And um, so those little stickers, the little squares, rectangles, whatever you want to call them, sticker collectors call those mods, M-O-D. So this is one mod of the Dress a Nerd paper doll stickers from Hallmark and that sold for $7. And then this is three mods of um, Hallmark Slug stickers. <laughs> Shirley Sluggo and Sherwood Slug. And those sold for $15. And then I had a Mrs. Grossman sticker sheet. It was a large sheet. Um, there wasn't anything real special. I didn't think about the sheet. And I couldn't find comps for it, but I listed it for $25 and it sold real quick. And these are just some some more Hallmark stickers, eight bucks or seven bucks I got for these. A Barbie outfit. The card was in absolutely terrible condition. It had been bent. It's torn in the back. There's bumps all the way around it and creases and stuff, but everything's still in there. Um, so I listed it for ten dollars and it sold real quick. I bought at Goodwill just a little bag of mystery stuff. It was like a loot crate bag. <clears throat> I had no idea what was in it. Um, and this was actually in the bag. I paid $6.99 for the bag and um, it had this Fire Force standee set. Never heard of it. Not, there weren't any listed. I listed it for $15 and it sold right away. So I probably could have got more out of it, but that's okay. The Scrooge McDuck pin that I paid uh, $2.97 for at the Disney Outlet Store. This is a old Dollar Tree Halloween die cut candelabra um, that we actually bought for decor a few years back, and I just listed it and sold it for nine bucks. This is Illuminations. Let's see, I have three here, and I want to do a shout out to a viewer who bought these Illuminations Fantasies stickers, $12, $50, $14, and $15. I have a couple of Hallmark 
strip stickers, um, which is like basically the same as the ones on the roll. We call them a strip or a mod. And um, I sold those for 10 and then dress a bride for eight. If you notice with a lot of the stickers that I got from the sale, she collected um, paper dolls. And so a lot of the stickers that she collected were like these activity style or like paper doll style stickers. Um, here's another perfume that sold for 15, another sticker sheet that sold for seven, Waterford Crystal Catalog. I love finding old catalogs. I bought a, a whole stack of Waterford Crystal and Yadro catalogs for like a quarter each. And um, that sold for nine. Three different sets of these um, Small World Greetings Mix and Match stickers. They were kind of interesting. Punk Rock Girls and Tennis Girls. Some Star Wars candy containers. These three, um, Chewbacca, Boba Fett, and C-3PO sold for 20 And um, Darth Vader and the Stormtrooper sold for 10 This was a cute little paper mache um, Halloween candy container. Not an old one. Um, I thought maybe it was Department 56, but it didn't the label had been torn off, didn't have a label anymore, so I, I wasn't sure. If it was Department 56, it probably would have gotten a little bit more, a few more dollars. It sold for $9. This was a little outfit for a Barbie doll that's a Tootie doll that came out, came out in 1963, but actually it was a Tootie size doll that was Buffy, the character from the show Family Affair. That's all at all confusing. Anyway, it had a little damage on it, so it sold for $12. This is another one from that um, kind of loot crate style um, box that I bought at Goodwill that sold for $12. This Robotech pen. Another sticker sheet for $12. Another sticker sheet for $15. Another one for $10. These are single sticker sheets, you guys. Another um, Dixie's Diner. This is the little booth and doll that sold for 25. So this guy was cool. This is a Disney Baby Glow Hercules stuffed plush. He, um, I did take an offer on him, I believe for 85 or 90. I can't remember now, but I paid $8 for him at the sale that I got all the makeup stuff from. And, uh, I was super glad that he sold for that much. <laughs> I hadn't um, bought him on the first day of the sale because, um, like I said, I couldn't look things up and it was $8. So I was like, eh, if he's worth $12 or something, it's not really worth it. But when I went home, I was trying to remember some of the things I saw, looked him up and I was like, oh yeah, when I go back, I'm going to have to get him. <laughs> and thankfully he was still there. This little um, bug sticker sheet by Xerox Education sold for $20, and that sold really fast. And then this sticker album, which is, if you've watched any of my videos of the sticker albums that I've found recently, this was actually book one. This is the only one that I've listed for sale so far, but it sold with one bid for $199.99. So I was excited about that. I got probably eight in a bag for $30 plus a bunch of like stickers like this pushed into the bag too as well. So I think I did pretty well on that one. Here's another sticker sheet for $75. This is a Charlie's Angels doll. She sold for $17.50. Two little Easter candy containers for $13.75. Four Plasticville um, little train layout buildings that sold for 20 A Barbie. She, mm, I think I took a $30 offer. I don't know why it's not showing that I took offers on some things. Um, I bought her for $10. I kind of paid up for her. I don't usually pay up for holiday Barbies, but the African-American Barbies usually do a little bit better. So I will pay a little bit more for those or buy them in general because typically I don't even buy holiday Barbies at all. Just because they've been so saturated, you know, the longer ago that that was, 
the more people are going to be collecting them. So it might be something to take a second look at. This was a Beatrix Potter gift shop paper doll set. It kind of, it was, it was larger, but kind of had the feel of a greeting card. So I listed it as a greeting card question mark. <laughs> that sold for $12. This is a Ginny doll. Oh, she sold on September 1st. Oh, I can't tell you about her. Well, you're going to have to come back at the end of September to find out. <laughs> so I guess that's it, guys. I had some pretty decent sales, mostly in stickers this year uh, or this month. So um, make sure and check out stickers, vintage stickers. If you see stickers at a sale, if it says something like scrapbooking on them, they're probably newer. Because in the 80s, even though people were doing some scrapbooking in the 80s, it wasn't like it started to be in the later 90s and the early 2000s. So if it says scrapbooking, it's probably newer and probably not as valuable. But Sandy Lion is definitely a company to look out for. And things that say they're from the 70s and 80s and the dates, you know, if they're cheap, it's worth picking up. It really is. Vintage. Um Hallmark dress it up like all of these stickers that sold this month were stickers that I listed this month. They sold that quickly, so they're good. People like stickers. Oh, oh no, I'm almost giving you a preview of next month. How dare I? <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. Make sure to comment, like, and subscribe. If you're not subscribed, you should totally be subscribed. It's free. It's easy. You just have to click that red button. If you click the little bell and make it look like it's ringing, you'll get a notification every time I put up a video, which is not as often as I'd like. So you won't get that many emails <laughs> or notifications. But um, I hope you enjoyed the video. Go check out some of my other videos. I have lots of other fun videos. If you haven't seen the What Sold in July or June or May or April or March, go back and watch those too. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time. Bye.